tradition, fundamentals, the essentials of showmanship, the way professional wrestling used to be. That's been the foundation and formula of the Universal Wrestling Federation. It began in the summer of 1990 with a mandate from founder and president Herb Abrams to bring professional wrestling back to the glory days. The UWF charter has followed in the footsteps of some of the great teachers of the sport. Now, in the proud tradition of these and other great champions, the UWF is ready to break from the pack. Herb Abrams here once again with another home video. This is some of our wildest matches here at the Universal Wrestling Federation. And first up, you'll see Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, as he takes on Spitball Patterson, only to be Pearl Harbor by Steve, Dr. Death Williams. This is with a clothesline. Orndorff with a surprise body press. press. Well, the flying body press, but you know, it really, it didn't, uh, that's not enough, really. He didn't have uh, Spitball in enough trouble or hurt in any way for, to hold him down for with that. Oh, oh knees yeah. to the face. <laughs> that caught him. Spitball was coming in with an elbow, I think, or a clothesline. I don't know what he was trying to get there, but he met uh, both of uh, Orndorff's ah. knees instead. Right to the face with those boots. Hey, when uh, Orndorff gets mad, he takes that rule book boot and he throws it out, too. Look at this. He's giving some of his own medicine. Look at this. Yes, he is. Rubbing his face across the top rope. But boy, that'll burn. That burns like crazy. There's that elbow. He's holding his neck, Spitball. He must have come right across the neck with the elbow. No, oh, yes, elbow. he did. You could see it that time. Side and regroup, recuperate a little bit. Stomped on his fingers. But Paul is very wise. He doesn't allow his opponent to uh, to rest. If he wouldn't have came in, he would have gone after him right outside that ring. Orndorff just stays on his opponent. Wow, what a beautiful drop kick, Bruno. Indeed, a beautiful drop kick. This guy's football. He's very, very tall. And Orndorff got, got way up there and got a vicious drop kick. Knee to the chin. <laughs> Paul's pushing on that top yeah, rope. He, he sure is. I don't think the referee caught that. <laughs> well, I think he did because he broke it up. Uh oh. Side suplex. Spitball hit the back of his head. Oh, he has slowed Spitball down considerably. Kick right in the midsection. Yeah. Knee lift. Ooh. Beautiful knee lift. Uh oh, oh Orndorff's going up to the top rope. What's he going to do from up there? Let's see. We what kind of a blow is he going to deliver on that top rope? We don't usually see on the. Oh, beautiful elbow. To elbow. That end. He's singling for that pile driver. Nobody does it quite like Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. If he gets it, you know that this match has come to a conclusion. And here it comes. Here it comes. Bam! Boom! Wow! That's it. That's it. Spitball is taking a nap. One, two, three. Fair enough. Brother, look! Steve oh, Duncan, oh, Death oh. Williams attacks Orndorff from behind! Now, what in the heck? What the heck is this? What is this? Steve Williams from some... Oh, my, look at this. No, oh, no. Wow, right against... Oh, and here comes on the other one. Oh, oh wow. Wow, look at Paul. He 
gives him a clothesline. Falls down on Steve. This is unbelievable. Look at Orndorff. Stay on him right now. Left. Come on, right to the chip. Uh-oh. He, he grabbed him oh. by the tights. Williams grabbed Orndorff by the tights he and yanked him out. Threw him out of that ring. This is an unscheduled, unbelievable bout here. Oh, he rammed wow. him right. He rammed Orndorff face first into that ring post there. Look, Williams is coming right. Holy cow. No. Williams just grabbed the chip. You better get up, boy. You better get out of the way. Here. Oh, 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 right no. here. Come on, wrap oh, up. Turn around. Dr. Depp. Oh, oh no. what a shot. Holy cow. He has just hit on top with a chair. Oh, oh no, we need some help. Good, good. Guys, Just three more guys. Run. Whoa, my. Steve Williams everybody. is going crazy. Holy cow. Look at this belay. This is unbelievable. Bruno Orndorff is hurt. Look at Orndorff is very down. hurt. We got to get some guys down here. Oh, Paul appears to be hurt. Look at what's Dr. Okay. Death is manhandling everybody they can't here. Hold him down. You got about six guys there. They can't stop Williams. Look at him. He wants to get. Oh, look, look at, at Paul. Orndorff. Paul is, all, Paul is busted open. Paul is busted open. He's bleeding. Dr. Death has caused severe damage here. Afa, the wild Samoan, will tangle with none other than Don the Rock Morocco in one of the UWF's wildest matches. Greg DeGeorge back with wrestling's living legend Bruno San Martino here at the Hotel Pennsylvania getting set for what should be, Bruno, a most interesting matchup. Why are you talking about some of the combatants here? Absolutely, and there he is. Look at that face. You never mistake him for anybody else. That's Hoffa, Hoffa the Wild Samoan. And who's that in the ring? You recognize that man? It looks like, is that Sam Samu? Samu, yes, that's it Samu. Is. He is a tough, tough uh, wrestler. He, uh, of course, walked in with, uh, I guess it's his uncle, isn't it? I'm not even sure, Hoffa. Uh, I believe Samu's his son. Oh, it's his son? Yes, oh. that's uh, Hoffa's son. Okay, and now comes Morocco, and of course, the first thing Morocco is saying, hey, 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 ref, get that guy out of the ring. It's bad enough to face Hoffa, much less Hoffa and uh, Samu, his son. I think he said, get him out of New York City, if you can read his lips, bro. <laughs> and I don't blame him, I'll tell you what, because uh, Morocco, and I and I give Morocco a lot of, oh, look at this, Samu attacks Mor Morocco. Samu, and now this is just what the Rock was fearing, both of the Samoans, the wild Samoans, going to work on the Rock, and now the clothesline to knock him down. And the headbutt, which is just about as vicious as you can get when you're talking about that head. Boy, this could come to a quick conclusion, I mean, with, with this vicious attack on uh, Morocco. Oh, boy, the Wild Samoans living up to their name. The Rock, of course, didn't sign up for a handicap match here. It was supposed to be Morocco against Afa. And Samu comes out of nowhere, and Dick Crow again, his usual trouble handling the two-on-one situation. Well, I think at least we got Samu. I don't see him. I think he may have uh, exited from that rank, which is good news for Morocco. Although the bad news is that he took such a such severe blows in the beginning that he still got a lot of cobwebs to clear. Morocco looks like he's. Oh no! Look at Samu <laughs> still on the side there, and he's. Continues to chop away at the rock. Look at that big elbow to the neck of Morocco. I spoke too soon. I thought uh, since he didn't see him in that ring, I thought maybe he had uh, scored it back to the dressing rooms, but I guess not. Since when does Alpha as a manager? I mean, if his son's coming to visit or watch, fine, but don't come in wrestling gear. The rock gets thrown in the turnbuckle, but sidesteps. Big Alpha goes hard into the steel pipe. I wonder how Alpha can see you know, through that <laughs> head of hair, yeah. And of course, after hitting his steel pipe, you wonder how he can see as well. And Rocco sends him outside the ring. That comes out after him. And there he goes, and he hasn't even had time to take off his shirt. And oh, he's trying to strangle Alpha now. And he elbows back Samu. And his attention now on the son of Alpha. And back and forth. Wow, we won't see a knock and knocker like that often. I don't know. It didn't look like it hurt him that bad. Well, I 
that's because of all the padding these guys have. Oh, yeah, I'm hearing the bell, right? The bell's just Yeah, we heard the bell. No, Malaco goes into that steel pipe, courtesy of Samu. Yeah, and all wild breaking loose here at the Penta. Well, you know, there was so much going on outside the ring. I think that the referee, we could see it for a while there. I think he was trying to bring some more. He was kind of, I think he was totally ignored. But there was still a 32 against one, so if any justification here, they should be disqualified, and the win should go to Morocco. We'll just have to wait and see. Yes, sir. Well. Oh, a wild match here with the Samoans and the Rock Don Morocco, who will, I'm sure, have some words to say to well. Herb Abrams or somebody here in the UWA. <laughs> Later that night, Mr. Red and the Ninja were involved in another melee. Oh, where does it come from, Lou? Yeah, this is... You can tell the condition these guys are in, which is great. I mean, because you notice how they just keep, keep going, but full of, I, I want to say, uh, that other it word works? that we use with the pee and vinegar. But I don't mean that kind of a word. Oh, but yeah. in other words, they're full of, uh, you know, what do you call them, vinegar, and they're ready to roll. You can just see, look at the stamina, look at this. Look at, look at the guy, look at that, there goes Mr. Red, this is, this is they have, a... Uh, they have not let up, that's for sure. This is a great match, I've never seen anything like it. Of course, if they put me in the Bronx Zoo, that could be, you know. Yeah, your jacket's right on the table over here. All right, Mr. Red working on the neck of uh, Pongo. And what is the referee doing? He's concerned with Super Ninja, and he's not even looking, and the Pongo's taking a beating from Mr. Red. Mr. Red is scraping his face. Pulling back in his hair and landing some shots. Oh, this, Greg, this, go ahead, Bruno. This referee had to go back to wrestling school. Yeah. When the two guys are outside the ring, he goes outside the ring with them. 
Manny Steele spend an hour arguing with a guy while the other guy's been shot. He really is a, a referee who's on top of things, very sharp. But I've got to, I've got to disagree with you, Bruno. This match is being filmed by ABC, NBC, and CBS for a, a documentary. This is great. This is going down in the Wrestling Hall of Fame as one of the greatest matches of all time. Look at this here. I've never seen anything like it. And this is, this is devastating. I have to say right Herb, now, yeah, go ahead, Herb, Herb, if you don't mind me interrupting, Please, Captain, ahead, my, my partner, Herb Abrams. I, I was in the back room and watching on the monitor some of these despicable things that this guy has been doing and carrying on. And I tell you, I've just met with uh, uh, our, our top management crew in the, uh, in the corporate offices. And, and if this guy just pulls any more stunts like this, we're just going to suspend him for 30 days and give and, and give him. What are you lesson. talking about, Mr. Talking about Mr. Mr. Red, Blue or red. red or black right. or whatever he calls us. Don't have him on our talk show Every anymore. Every week he's a different color. Right. Got that red neck brace as well this week. And you're right. He is just. I think the referee, Herb Abrams, as long as we have you here, this referee needs to get some schooling as well. He's turned his back several times throughout the match. Bruno has brought that out. Well, we've this seen this manager I, I, on what one or two other occasions. Yeah. And um, he's an interesting kind of a wrestler. I mean, new to the UWF. We've been trying to figure him out. He hasn't really well, shown a Japanese arsenal. I'm going to ask you a question, uh, Herb. Now, as the promoter, I see like this ninja. I've never seen him before. Some of these other people. Do you bring him on just Got to him. check them out to see if they're worthy to keep the UWF? Or yes, exactly. Oh, but what is going on here? What is this? Oh, they got the three Red trying to hit Pongo missed. And now the Pongo using all those leg muscles going to work on Mr. Red. Yeah, this guy's unbelievable. He interferes in all the matches, and I can't understand it. Well, that time it did not work out for that blonde-haired creature. Well now where the referee continues to let Ninja Guy, Super Ninja, go out and hit Pongo. Match has been over. This yeah. match reminded me of uh, the, what was it? The great Killer Kowalski against Edward Carpentier. It had the same motions in the ring when you looked at it. <laughs> this I saw guy is hurt. No, this it. guy is hurt. Oh, sure. Whoa, look at he, he just hit the, ref. the referee in the face. Because we can't stomach the referee. He's doing a great job too. <laughs> Well, it, uh, I, I am sickened by all this. I'm suspended. Herb Abrams is going to go to work and uh, suspend Super Ninja, I think. I'll tell you, the guy's hot. Herb's going to the ring. I mean, Mr. Red! Mr. Red! Mr. Mr. Red apparently is a... Uh, hey. I'm not going to find a behavior official. I want to sell out here. You are suspended for 30 days! Suspended for 30 days! Look at this. Oh, Somebody better get in and help out. Captain Lou's going toward the ring. Oh, Herb got a foot in on Mr. Red. And the referee headbutted. Now Herb wants to get out. Lenny Douche from the UWF holding him back. Captain Lou has got in there. And he took out the suspenders. What's Herb doing? Took him down. Herb Abrams may have a new career, folks. He could be the top contender. He had a couple of good right hands. He's certainly as big as the Pongo guy. Herb is losing it. Outside the ring, he knocks down Mr. Red. Oh, now he took the right from Super Ninja. Somebody had better come to Herb Abrams' rescue. Captain Lou does. Herb Abrams is down. Captain Lou, a shot to the Super Ninja Man. This is all that Bruno silenced and stunned at the developments that have gone on here. Now they'll attend. Hopefully, Herb's okay. Captain Lou nails Super Ninja with a chair. It has broken loose, folks. 
Out of control, Bedlam. Next up, a war of hate between two of wrestling's giants. Terry Bam Bam Gordy tangles with The Rock from Honolulu, Hawaii, Don Morocco. And what a wild brawl this will be. Morocco! Come on out here and get your weapon, boy! Come on! Gordy, and here comes Don Morocco, no introduction, he just runs out, and here they go! They're Warren. training right to the left! No time wasted here, look at this! Oh, to the top turnbuckle! And he rocks him with a big right hand! My, oh my! This is, of course, the second round elimination match. The winner to go to the semis. They meet the... Dr. Death, the winner of the Ray Williams match. Referees are taking a beating this hour. But these guys here, Gordy, I don't know what he was trying to say. He grabbed the mic and say something about Morocco. Here comes Morocco flying in, and boy, they, oh, the referee gets knocked down again. Now, that's a no, no, there you go. There's the bell. Knocked down. Bruno, this could put both of them out of the elimination tournament. If this is a disqualification, Bruno, this will knock both out of the elimination tournament. Wow. Well, but you know, honestly, you can't blame the go. referee. The referee got hit two different times. This match is out. not ended either, Bruno. No, 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 look at this. Big right hand from Gordy. Double accent on the back of Gordy by the rock. You know, the referee gave him every opportunity. He took the first blow, which by rules, immediately he could have disqualified me. Let it go. But hey, you, they knocked him down a second time. And hey, that's, that's one, many, two. That's too many. And Bell, not a good sound for either of these guys who really have their hopes set on that big, beautiful UWF belt. It's a double DQ, so that makes it official. Both are gone. Cross them out of your tournament scorecard. Look at this. I, this is going to continue on to a... Ten-minute time limit. The referee is Tom Fornini. Introducing a 280-pound Hulk from Santa Monica, California, Sonny Beach! There he is, Sonny Beach, bro. 280 pounds, he's a big guy, there's no question about him, a big, big kid. Just wonder if he's caught up a little bit too much with the surfboard, though, and the sunshine and the waves. Although, when he does put that stuff aside, we have been impressed. No question about it, but uh, he's going to have a tough opponent tonight, so we will see. <laughs> his opponent approaches the ring, accompanied by his manager, the nefarious Golden Greek, John Tullis. He is a 247-pound wrestler from St. Louis, Missouri. He is the Cowboy Bob Orton! The nefarious, very nice Frankie. Manager John Tolos and the East Cowboy Bob Orton, a veteran against a relative newcomer here in the UWF. Well, the problem Sunny Beach is going to have is number one in facing Bob Orton. He's meeting a, a tremendous, tremendous wrestler, and of course we know how he's capable of bending and twisting and breaking the rules. But when you have a John Tolos, you know John Tolos. I'm sure we've said this before in fans. Some of the older fans remember the Tolos brothers, one of the toughest teams ever to, to go into a ring, and John Tolos. I tell you, as a manager, he's wicked because when his people are in trouble, he always manages to do something. And so it's a great distraction for Sonny Beach, and we just have to wait to see how he can cope with the situation. And you don't want it to become a one-on-two situation when you don't have a manager to worry about, but that can happen when you end up on the wrong side of the ring, the wrong part of town. That's right. And I guess anything away from the beach is the wrong part of town for Sonny. Well, it appears to have won the crowd over. Pretty easy to do when you're going up against the likes of the ace. That's for sure. We know that Bob Horton is not the love guy by his fans, is he? And look at him. He's knowing away already at the bicep of Sunny Beach. There's Tallis. Well tanned. But just well, keep an eye on him, as Bruno said. But you know, Craig, as we said, you know, I know people don't like uh, Horton because they see him. But you can't take away the man's abilities. This guy is a wrestler. 
I mean, it's too bad that he chooses to be what he is, who breaks all the rules and so on. But Bob Wharton, in my opinion, could be an extremely successful wrestler without any of that, because this guy's talent comes from a great wrestling family. I remember his father. Yeah. In fact, I wrestled his father a number of times. His father was a very, very good wrestler, a tough wrestler. And he's taught his kids well, because uh, this guy, this Bob Wharton's a tremendous wrestler. Coles, of course, no stranger to wrestling, and uh, looked like he was going to get involved in a match outside the ring there for a moment. As you look at Sunny Beach, I'm Craig DeGeorge, along with the living legend Bruno San Martino. And look, John Tolis does appear to be more concerned about the crowd than the match in the ring, and that's not a good idea. Beach with a nice reversal on the mat. Universal Wrestling Federation action coming to you on Sports Channel America from the beautiful New York Penta Hotel in the heart of mid-Manhattan. What better place to have a match in a great wrestling excitement than the Big Apple? Absolutely. Good old New York. I love this town, Craig. Although I understand fans in Florida, keep your eyes on the screen. We will be apparently heading down there in a few weeks. Trying to get a hip toss, but look at that. Beach with another reversal and gets the hip toss on Orton. And Orton is shaking up. And he said he doesn't have his manager helping him out. That's true, but that was a nice reversal. Horton actually tried to catch uh, Sunny Beach with that hip toss. Sunny Beach did it very nicely. Just got him on balance spot around the took uh, Horton. Right now, I don't trust what's going on. Horton is not that hurt from a hip lock. Uh, a little possum here, and I would su suggest that Sunny Beach be very careful. And we did notice Tola stopped signing autographs, and he's back in there now. And you just wonder from the Tola's viewpoint, he knows what he's doing usually if he tried to purposely get lost in the match. So the ref does not notice him, and all of a sudden, yeah, sort of, where is this guy? Yeah, when he's in interfering in the match. That's right. The coach, look at him, dressed up with that uh, outfit and his sweatshirt, and the hat and the whistle. Whistle and the coach. Does he have any authority with that whistle? Can he signal a penalty on Sunny Beach? Hey, listen, I'll tell you what, uh, that, that, that uh, whistle might be a lot more than one might think, because keep in mind, he has friends back there. Who knows? One of his boys is ever in trouble. Set signals with that whistle. Right now, his boy is in trouble. Yes, he is. Greeting the turnbuckle. Oh, boy. That time into the steel pipe. Sunny Beach. You see, now Horton seemed in trouble when he came off the short. He really did. I'm not sure that Sunny Beach should have come up with that headlock. To me, when you mention trouble, he should have tried to pick him up, slam him, or whip the show for a backdrop, something that, that will take the wind out of you. A headlock like this, I don't think it's going to be that much damage for Horton. In fact, you're going to give him a chance really to recoup. Don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting yeah. that the headlock doesn't hurt, but a guy like Horton knows how to use leverage to take some of the uh, some of the pressure off, and there he is. And right now, it looks like he's going to have the upper hand. Good point. Yes, he was in a side headlock, and then all of a sudden, you saw that knee planted in the ear of... Sunny Beach. Tola is trying to cover around now. Tola has really the ability here, Bruno, without another manager to work the entire ring. Wherever the action is, he seems to be in the corner. And that could be double trouble for Sunny Beach. Indeed. Well, Beach's uh, face is already red, but it will be a little bit redder Look from the boot of the ace. Of course, Sunny has that uh, great tan. Canvas or try to pick uh, him up. Look out. What's that, he going for? A Boston Crab? That's looks it. like he's trying to maneuver it at. Uh, Beach looks like a Boston Crab at this point with that red tinge. If he were smart, he grabbed those, but don't let him get you turned over because if Horton turns him over, well, they're outside now. He has to break. The referee has to break. Oh, boy, did you see that? Horton lined him up, Bruno, so that when he snapped him back, the head of Beach would rock against that bottom rope. With his neck. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen that before. Well, you can talk about a veteran. We always throw that word out, veteran. I think right there you got a good idea. He oh, knew exactly where he was, and he set him up. Absolutely, absolutely. He doesn't miss a trick. This guy knows every trick in the book. He's, uh, he, he doesn't make too many mistakes, that's for sure. You've got to be careful not to make a mistake when you're wrestling board because he's the type of a guy who can just take, take advantage of and take the match. So you've got to be careful with him. And, Sunny Beach that time, he, he got caught there, and uh, when he was by those ropes, he should have hooked that bottom rope, and maybe could have had some leverage and not allowing him to do that. And at least it maybe have gotten the referee to have him break and get back into the center of the ring. Sunny known for the wipeout, of course, and the sunset sleeper, the gut ramp suplex, but right now he's taking all the punishment from the East Cowboy Bob Orton, and he has not been able to dip into his bag of tricks. 
said, he is a pretty good wrestler, this Sunny Beach. Yes, he is. He's a young guy. You know, he's had, he has a couple of years, uh, of course, in the professional circuit. But, uh, you know, he trained well. He trained long. He, he uh, was in the amateur ranks. And uh, he's a big kid, 280 pounds. He's very tall. Uh, I mean, so far, right now, what is uh, that question is the advantage. But up to now, he's made a good account of himself. He's been doing okay against Orton. Good backbreaker by Sonny. Now he hears it from the crowd. And Orton doesn't like it. The crowd yelling, Sonny, Sonny. Beach's amateur background. He was a runner-up in 1985 with the U.S. Nationals. High school state champion. Right now, that is not helping him. Do you find Bruno? Oh, good foot to the face there. That most wrestlers who have success in the ring were talented amateur wrestlers, or is it possible to, to go the route without having an amateur background? In my opinion, the uh, amateur background is a, a definite, definite help for an individual. Someone without an uh, amateur background, to me, will never uh, reach truly the, 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 the tops. It is but it's very difficult. Too much time to make up. Too much Absolutely. to learn, I guess. Oh, boy. First he got him with a backbreaker. Then he landed the elbow to the neck at Beach. Boy, he probably wishes he was lying in a look, 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 We talked about him. Here he gets the foot in. And he is just hammering away with that big 10 valley shoe. Maybe it's a 12. 14. A man. 14, is that right? I wear a 13, and believe me, <laughs> his shoe is bigger than mine. Oh, look at this guy. Don Thomas looks to be in very good shape, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, this guy keeps in shape. And don't kid yourself, John Thomas knows where every camera is in this building. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, I, I was told that uh, he runs uh, quite a bit every day, five, six miles, top sign, but he's not heavy like when he wrestled. When he wrestled, he used to be about 250, 255. Now I guess he's about 220 uh, tallest. Now, I'd like to see him run away from the ring area. How about that? Uh, he's uh, five miles right now. I'm sure Sunny Beach wouldn't mind that after getting those boots in the face. Or meanwhile, boy, you would think that all this punishment is just going to be adding up. But Sonny somehow just hanging in there. Well, Sonny's a young guy, 280 pounds, as we said, and he, he can take a lot of punishment. He's, uh, he's a strong kid. He's a, he's a big, powerful kid. And he, he can, it's not wise to take a lot of punishment, no. <laughs> but uh, he can. He can take it. He's on 247 on beach again, though. Sonny able to kick out. A big matchup coming up. The Rock, Don Morocco, and Cactus Jack. Plenty more this hour on the UWF Fury Hour. Oh, or trying for some sort of slam. What's it? No, he's got more than a no. slam in mind. I don't yeah. know what he's trying to do. Believe me, if it was a slam, he would have slammed him already. He's yeah, got yeah. something else in mind. Okay, yeah, right. Now, he's going, oh, he put him down and may get him here. No, he, boy, he let him up that time. Now, uh, I don't understand why Horton, a veteran like him, would do that. Again, Torres from the outside, this time using his head. Knocking beach the referee, Tom Fornini. Oblivious, here comes, whoa, Steve Ray is coming to the ring. Steve Ray is in the ring. And he blows off, and now the referee sees that. And here they go, how many the land? Well, they're in trouble with this, unfortunately. I can see Steve Ray came in because he saw Torres in the first of all time. But that's how the next one goes. But look it up. Let's see, I think it's Cactus, Cactus Jack. Jack is in there, Bruno. You're right. And he pulls Steve Ray down. Oh, boy. And they're and both on. away at the top. And Ray trying to get a knee in there, but Cactus Jack is scraping his face. And he blocks the right hand, and he continues to land away. Beach is completely out of it. He cannot help out here. Headbutt by Bob Orton. Remember what kind of damage that did to Honey Bee several months ago. And look, look at this uh -oh. now. Oh, look at uh -oh. Cactus Jack. There. What's he doing? Biting him? They're going to Horton and uh, Cactus are going to, let's see, whip them against each other. Yes, I think so. No, I think so. And Jack and Orton hit, and then a drop kick. Orton goes flying out of the ring. Cactus Jack goes flying out of the ring. And I'll bet you what, I'll bet they won't come back in the ring. Told us right now, he's telling them, okay, let's get out of here. We don't need any more of this. Boy, did they work together well in that or what? Look at Cactus Jack. Look at him. Look at his face. <laughs> Steve Ray and Sunny Beach look like a natural in there. Just when you thought they were going down, they flipped it around in Brussels. And a little Sunny Beach has his hand raised. Well, you know, Steve Ray, but I think he was angry when he saw Colas. When he saw Colas in the fair, that's what really got him upset. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The winner, the
The referee awards the match by disqualification due to outside interference to Cowboy Bob Orton. Well, no surprise there. Let's see what Herb Abrams has to say. He's talking with the East Cowboy Bob Orton and Cactus Jack. Herb. John Collins, have you just got the contract on Cactus Jack? What's going on over here? I got the contract on Cactus Jack, and I got the contract on Big Bob Orton. I got nothing but the greatest wrestlers in my stable, and you people see that tonight. And this is only the beginning, because I am only starting with my stallions. Cactus, you have just enforced the services of John Thomas to go to break. John's got me working out. My pants are no longer fitting too well. I think, I think I need a belt. They're having my fun beating people to a pulp. The things I like to do best, humiliate them, slap them in the face and beat them to a pulp. And then this wild man, wild thing, whatever he thinks he is, comes running in and interfering in my business. Well, he better be ready, boy. You had better be ready. What do they call it? John, if, if, will you accept the challenge of these guys challenge you back to a tag team match? First of all, what is this, a new team? Would you, would you accept the challenge from these two guys? Let me tell you something. Oh, my. Orton is landing a shot right in the middle of the interview. And now they're going out left to right with the chair. Orton hammering away. Wild thing trying to turn him around. This gets very oh, dangerous out on the ring, where, which is really the home of these guys. Cactus Jack and Orton. I wish I could break it up, but I don't like this. Look at those, and they're right where in the midst of the fence. That's not very wise here. I don't want to see, I don't want to see nobody get hurt out there. Some of the fence up to the fence, we're yeah. out of the way. You know, there's a lot of beef out there. These are four big men plus Tolis. Oh, boy. oh boy, look at this. I think it's really getting out of hand. Come on, folks, where's security? Where's security? Where are the referees? Where's Dick Crow? Where's Fornini? Look at Tolis. Look at this. Now, here's our manager. Oh. I'll tell you. Beach and Ray. Oh, he's got the chair now. Let's see, who's he gonna hit with it? Hi, I'm... UWF, the Universal Wrestling Federation. The pinnacle in sports programming. What the universe is watching.